last year has been a really busy and exciting one for the Trust, but the pressures that society has been putting on the natural world means that it's ever more difficult for us to achieve our vision of a sustainable future for wildlife and for people. But with the support of so many donors, volunteers and members, and with a wide variety of different partners, we've been able to achieve a great deal this year. This short film gives a taste of just some of the events and activities of the past year. Class Wood is one of several woodlands that run through Swindon, so Hodson, Binal, Alcombe, further down, and Clouts is the middle link to that. This is right on the edge of Swindon. This is urban fringe. This is really well visited woodland. People come here every single day. Look at the paths, really well walked. Pupils at Ridgeway School have designed an interpretation board here. Communities really engage with this woodland. They want to be here, they want to be funding projects here. People want this woodland to stay and be preserved. And that's what the Wildlife Trust have done. We also extended our land holding onto Markham Banks, which gives us an opportunity to restore that fantastic area of chalk grassland and gradually revert that grassland back to wonderful wildflower meadow. Back in July we completed phase three of Rivermead, which was completing the meanders, putting the bends back into the river and the contractors coming in to do that. So we've moved on to phases four and five now, which is the maintenance and the management of the site. It's been a partnership project between quite a, a lot of different organisations, but it's a, a fantastic resource Rivermead. There's so many people that come through here on the cycle path. It's a really beautiful place, right in the heart of Swindon. You've got sparrow hawks in the tree mound, lots of different species of fish in the river. The herons come down, the egrets as well, and people just love to sit and watch the wildlife. The Trust has 38 reserves in all. The land size is approximately 2,000 acres. We're standing here today at the Blake Hill, which is the largest reserve that the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust owns. Wiltshire Wildlife Trust purchased it in 2000 to actually re-establish it back to the, the wonderful flower meadows it once was. We've also uh, taken on the, the task of becoming farmers as well. This is something very unusual within Wildlife Trust, but the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust has actually grasped the nettle and is farming themselves. We are just looking over the new barn which was built over the past uh, 14 months. We had cattle housed in it last year. It adds much needed housing for the new suckler herd that we are constantly expanding. Livestock farmers have been decreasing in numbers quite dramatically recently and there just isn't the amount of livestock around that there used to be. So we thought it wise to invest in our own livestock because also we're using a special breed as well, the Dexter cattle. Is it a survey for just bats or are you wanting bats and owls? Both Chalk Hill and Wiltshire Rural Services are part of WHEEL, which is Wiltshire Environmental Enterprises Limited. WHEEL is the commercial arm of the trust, so it has to maintain itself as a business but then make a profit which is then gift aided back to the trust. Chalk Hill are a team of ecologists offering surveys and advice for ecological work. Up until April 2008, Wiltshire Rural Services were basically doing the countryside management for the reserves within the Trust. It became a commercial division. So we now actually bid competitively for tenders for contractual work. Palace. 
as this afternoon gathering. I hope the parliamentarians here will resume their contacts if they don't already have them with their own local wildlife trust. You know, it's, it's absolutely live at the moment. You've got all my contacts, haven't we you? Have. Yes, yes, we have indeed. How long is this Living Landscape project going to last? And that's why we need yeah. support from people like yourself to help us deliver that. And it's very important that we don't allow these uh, projects to only last three years. Whereas the wildlife trusts are there forever. I never sign an energy motion without reading it. Of course we do. I'd ask you to, uh, to make a pledge at any rate. Yes. Um, on here. Yeah. Keep in touch. Gary will tell you, I'm quite a good correspondent. It is very slow and it is very subtle, but the impacts can be quite dramatic. And there was this magnificent display of uh, wildflowers this year, and it's spreading. And one of the things that we need to continue to do is to encourage the other neighbouring landowners to some of the existing rich sites to get them to also engage in the scheme. And that's where we need help from people such as yourself to get those contacts. This is a really good place to get an overview of Westbury and its bypass. Westbury is the town behind us and the bypass will run down this lovely tranquil valley. The road itself is going to have what's called a mitigation package. That's the things that make the road less damaging than it might be. It will break the countryside up, make it harder for wildlife to move around. And then you can put various things in that will reduce that damage, but there's still a net loss. So what you need to do to produce a gain is do some actual habitat creation. What we've suggested is a habitat corridor that runs alongside the road so that if the road is there to help people move around the landscape then the habitat corridor will help wildlife to move around the landscape and it's a win-win. They get their road, we get more wildlife. Now there's a thing called PPS 9, that's Planning Policy Statement 9 and it repeatedly uses the word enhance biodiversity, restore biodiversity but that's not what they're proposing. That's why it's an important point of principle. We're going to find out the result of the public inquiry in spring 2009, and then we'll know whether the PPS9, the government's premier policy on biodiversity, is worth the paper it's written on. Yes, we yeah, have yeah. the golden rules. Things that you're aiming to do within your school, so being polite and considerate and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, this is a kind of an eco version of that, so what are That's you trying to do in the school? Free um, compost buckets and we recycle leaves in it. And then you can use it for the um, plants. We don't waste electricity or waste anything we don't really need to use. We have to keep the door shutting, so if we have the heating on, to keep all the hotness in. If we chuck litter everywhere, our children will probably do the same. And if your parents do chuck litter everywhere, what you could do, you could advise them and you can pick it up and then maybe they'll stop. And I would like to thank everybody who's come here tonight because I think that you realise that we cannot go on the way we're doing at the moment. We've been working for several years with the Wildlife Trust on waste minimisation and when the opportunity arose with the Wildlife Trust having a new media unit for us to use that and create some videos, we just thought it was a brilliant opportunity. Working with a partner who really understands about waste and the environment. The benefit of using video is that you can get some quite complicated, sophisticated messages out in a way that's attractive for people to look at. If you try and put information into a leaflet, for example, you'd have to have a lot of pages just to explain what happens to the recycling. When you can use video, you can show people and they can see it, and as they say, a picture paints a thousand words.
Memberships are the trust. Without the members, we wouldn't have a trust. Membership is a very important part of our income. We couldn't exist without it. We're very grateful to all our members for all the subscriptions, donations that they give us. They also volunteer, they go out onto our reserves, they volunteer in the office, they help with many, many things. I live just about 10 minutes away in Robbourne and three of us decided to apply for the community wardens. We can be the eyes and ears of Wiltshire Wildlife so that we maintain the reserve in the way that it should be. We come round generally on a walk round. It's a warden's job. A lot of the locations we have to like go by bus or get car shares. Somewhere like here, I mean it's quite good for people who don't live far from here, can just walk from here. It absolutely does build your confidence up and it's a good social life as well because the group here, they're a fab bunch of guys. I mean, it looks good on your CV as well. The Sarsen Trail is a key event in the calendar of the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust. For a start, it's our largest fundraising event and it's a walk from Avebury to Stonehenge. It crosses 26 miles right through the county. Lots of promotion about it, lots of radio time, press releases, editorials, so people really get to know about what, what we're doing and why we're doing it. The 2008 Sarsen Trail took place on Sunday the 4th of May and we had about 1,100 walkers, we had 273 marathon runners, we had about 100 half marathon runners and about 85 people who ran with their dogs. As well as all those people, we had about 120 volunteers. So it was a really nice way that it doesn't matter where you lived in the county, you could kind of all help. As you can imagine, without them, it just wouldn't go ahead. Absolutely. The supper started about six months ago. One section does a presentation on what they all do and what the purpose of their projects are and the audiences they reach. Some of the research that's been done shows that activity in a natural setting is more beneficial than antidepressants or mood enhancing drugs. It informs the trustees so that they're completely informed as to what the day-to-day -day activities of each section are. And the managers feel that the trustees are aware of what they're doing and can support the staff in what they're doing. Welcome to the Swindon office. We moved here in January 2008. It's a nice big space, plenty of room for us to grow and expand. We have our own separate meeting room, we have our own separate tool storage facility here. And of course, with everything being so close, our tool store, vehicle storage is all here on site. And it's right next to our new nature reserves at Clapswood and Markham Banks. To have this on your doorstep, and basically have this as your baby is brilliant. We're trying to get the, the general public to, to interact with nature. I never even knew half of these places exist and I've lived in Swindon all, all my life. I feel that I'm lucky to be in a position where I've got an opportunity to try and make a difference. It's thanks to our many members and to the terrific efforts of our volunteers and staff that the Trust is one of the UK's most effective and respected environmental charities, tackling a range of issues at the national, regional and local level. But the pressures on the environment are huge and they're growing. We have to up our game. It's no longer enough for individuals now to do their best. Society as a whole has to change and the Trust is determined to play its full part in helping to create a sustainable future for wildlife and for people. But to do that, we really do need your support. Thank you.